Welcome, you're listening to the Leading Hope Podcast. My name is VJ Williams here with my friend and pastor, Kevin Jack. Thank you for joining us today. If you're new, we release these every Wednesday. Subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We'd love to see you uh, and sharing this with your friends. Also, rate and review on Apple Podcasts. A few extra minutes. Help get this in the hands of all your friends who are leaders, who are trying to get better just like us. And visit Leading Hope uh, to get updates and find out more about the That's Leading Did you Hope change that? community. I'm, the, I'm, I'm just going to change it from now Leaders who are trying to get better just like us. Just like us. That's great. We are. you said just like you, typically. Oh, okay. Good, more inclusive no, we're verbiage trying to get better. adaptation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm trying to get better. I don't know about you. <laughs> no, I was, I was, I was <laughs> applauding you for it. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> All right. Hey, check this out. You've got this episode 157. Yes. You ready for this? 157. Yeah, 157. And this is, this is a lot. Like, I mean, I'm, yep. I'm talking to Go you. Ahead. You want me to just say it? Do it. Yeah. Do whatever you You're want to do. You're not burnt out. Getting a better vocabulary. Yeah. Oof, there's a lot there. So this is what I want to, because we've talked about burnout before. Wow. Yeah. And one of my favorite episodes that we did was the oh, uh, yeah. two likely burnout candidates. And we just kind of went through that. This is, I really want to talk about the idea of getting a better vocabulary, but I need to use as the example the way people talk about burning out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we're really talking about vocabulary. Okay. We're just using the example of that is something we should stop saying and we're going you're to- You're not burnout. Got it. So Very here's, good. so example one, I'm, I've got two examples. Okay. And then we're going to run through the content. Okay. Example one is um, I have to have this conversation with my kids in, in a good way of um, explaining to them that they're not angry. Because for them, everything is angry. And to explain like, no, like when this doesn't happen, you're like throwing a fit. Like you're mad. Yeah. You're, and so in some instances, like, no, we did not go to the store. You feel let down. No, we did not do this. You're disappointed. No, this didn't work out how you wanted. You're frustrated. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. For them, though. It's mad. Everything, especially the younger ones, everything is anger. So what's going on? I'm mad. No, okay. Like it's it's a different form. Yeah. And so what happens is is that because they don't have a vocabulary for how they're actually feeling, then what happens is they respond as if everything makes them mad. It's good. Which is not a healthy, helpful response. Right. That's example one. Example number two is I we've talked about this before. Is we overuse the word burnout. Mm-hmm. Oh, let me give one note. I, I believe that as we expand our grasp of emotions, we have a better way of understanding and dealing with in a healthy way what we're feeling. With me? Yeah. Read it again. Yeah. As we expand our grasp of emotions, we have a better way of understanding and dealing with in a healthy way what we're actually feeling. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So as I get like, no, yep. that's not this. No, I feel I feel betrayed. Not just mad because response to betrayal is different than just blunt anger. Yeah. And so we go, now I know how to act. So now we'll talk about this in the context of burnout. So this is how burnout is defined. It is a syndrome conceptualized. I didn't make this up. I want to be clear. Yeah, who is this? Uh, Mayo Clinics. Okay. Definition of burnout. And, um, and they say it is not a diagnosable disease. It's not a diagnosable syndrome. Does that mean it's not a, it's a thing still? It's a thing that can't be diagnosed. I don't feel like I can speak with authority as to whether they're saying it's a thing or not. Okay. Cool? Yep. I I say that completely neutral. And I think it's important that you state that before you go on. That way that we're not giving out medical diagnoses. Thank you. Yeah. We are not doctors. That's correct. (laughs) I just want to make sure that's clear. So burnout is defined as a syndrome conceptualized as resulting from chronic workplace stress that has not been successfully managed, that is characterized by energy depletion, increased mental distance, or feelings of cynicism related to one's job. Mm. Okay. So we look at that, they wow. say like, hey, it's because I didn't effectively manage workplace stress, or you could say it the other way, if too much workplace stress was placed on me, I think both are accurate, but energy depletion, increased mental distance from my job, or feelings of cynicism. I want to I say in there, just like the, I don't know anyone who hasn't had feelings of cynicism related to one's job. Never. 
They would just say like to walk in and like and one would like, Oh, this sucks. Or like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, this isn't gonna go well. Yeah. Or oh, I'm gonna have yeah. to do this. Yeah. I okay. don't want to go to work today. <laughs> so I I think <laughs> what happens is is that the tendency is we look at those symptoms energy depletion, increased mental distance, feelings of cynicism. And we assume that if we're experiencing any one of those that we're burnt out. Yeah. And if I could just give like, can I just give some other options? Ready? Let me just say like, uh, you could be overworked. You simply might just be working too many hours than your body can handle. You might be sleep deprived. Uh, I have a, a whoop fitness tracker. Like thing that you wear on your wrist. Oh yeah, and the whoop. There it is. <laughs> and the, the <laughs> thank you for that. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the thing that it measures is it measures your strain and your recovery. So if you're like sleep deprived, it means you have strain but you have no recovery. Uh, was you, that was that also provided to you by the Mayo Clinic? No, it okay. was not. All right. Uh, you could be overwhelmed. You have too much stress in too many areas of your life. You could be overextended. You have too many act activities in too many areas of your life uh overwhelmed to me is a mental thing overextended is a physical thing okay overwhelmed is i cannot handle all that's coming my way it's too much overextended is i literally do not have the time in the day to handle all the things that are coming my way yeah uh, you could be bored <laughs> you could be tired of the job that you're working and you've become complacent in it uh, you could be working outside of your skill set and i think the tendency is is whenever anyone is frustrated with their job or tired of their work, we'll just use this shorthand of I'm burnout. Mm. And so here becomes the problem is that when we're not actually aware of the emotion that we're feeling, of the symptoms that are occurring with it, then we won't diagnose it correctly. Here's my kind of takeaway note for today. When we are lazy in the diagnosis, we are usually wrong in the treatment. Oh, that's good. When we're lazy in the diagnosis, when we don't take the proper time to define what is wrong and why it's wrong, even, yeah, we will mistreat what's taking place. If you would look at it like the best doctors, if we keep going back to medical practice, yep. the best doctors will be thorough in their evaluation so they can be accurate in their diagnosis so they can be as simple as they can be in their treatment. Yeah. The worst doctors will be quick in their evaluation. Oh, oh yeah, you got man. this. Yeah, you got this. Yeah, you got this. Okay, cool. It's probably this. Let's try this for 30 days and then let's see how it goes. Yeah, the, the last part of your examination takes 15 seconds. The first part <laughs> takes 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah, I fill out the form with all this stuff. Yeah. I answered two questions. Take two of these and call me if there's something wrong. Exactly right. Yep. And, and so we go like, that doesn't work because yep. you're on the wrong medication and then you have symptoms that you shouldn't have had to begin with. When we are lazy in the diagnosis, we are usually wrong in the treatment. And here's my guess is that there's someone who's listening today and, and you've gone through that medically. Like you've been through that where it didn't work. Yeah. It didn't fit. They misdiagnosed you. But I also want you to know in your work life, you could be doing the same thing to yourself. So yeah. So you good. could just be assuming Oh, I'm burnt out. It's good. Oh, I'm this. And, and so I, I just really want to encourage people. And, and then if I could just give a couple examples real quick, is that you need to get a better vo vocabulary. Do not settle for shorthand cultural phrases as to this is what's wrong. Because what happens, especially in leadership, is then buzzwords will come up of, oh, we need this, so oh, we need this, values, everything's trust, everything's systems, everything's that. And, and I believe those things are important but we settle for a lazy diagnosis so we don't adequately understand what's taking place. Um, if I could share this morning, uh, we were in a meeting and we were talking through some stuff. We have this frustrating thing that happens at Highland Park, which is not like a brand new thing to church, is that uh, before church is over, when we're inviting people into a relationship with Jesus, uh, people leave. <laughs> Yeah. Which, can I just acknowledge how hilarious and ridiculous that is to actually say? Yeah. When we were in the moment of inviting people for the eternity to be different, people leave. There's movement. <laughs> There's movement. They just walk out. And so we're talking through, like, what are those things? Yeah. And there's some, like, there's honestly some simple things. Like, hey, we have some staff members that move around, that go out to the lobby so they're prepped for their role there. Hey, we should change that. Yeah. Hey, we've got these other things that some people prop the doors open. Yeah. Other people leave because of mobility issues, which I have all the empathy in the world for. I really do. And 
and it's just like easy. And my statement in there was like, it's a cultural thing. They don't care about who we are as a church yet. They still go to church out of routine. Right. If we address it on the systems level, but not the vision level, yeah. then nothing will be different. And if we're lazy in our diagnosis, we'll lock the doors, we'll change the rhythm, but we won't understand the thing that's actually off. Right. You need a better vocabulary for what's wrong to ensure you don't settle for a lazy diagnosis because when we're lazy in the diagnosis, we are usually wrong in the treatment. So your boss might not be a narcissist. They could just be a poor communicator or lack experience, or they could be introverted. <laughs> they could be shy and they just don't really, you think they're all about themselves. They just really don't know how to interact well with others. Uh, your team might not be lazy. You might be a poor communicator. They could lack experience. You could lack experience. Uh, they could work on different rhythms than you do. And you don't realize when they're working as hard as they can be because you work on a different rhythm. They could lack the skill set that is needed. I want you to see that the work of diagnosis is significant. That diagnosis ensures that you can have the correct treatment. Good doctors ensure proper diagnosis to ensure that the treatment is as easy as it can be. We must not rush to a lazy diagnosis and then wonder why we never get better. So here's the key question that I have for us today Ooh. is what's really the issue and not just the buzzword that everyone is using right now. When you're in a meeting, when there's a frustration, when there's a problem, when you think about the issues within your team, your culture, your organization, your family, your relationships, whatever that is, what's really the issue What's really the emotions being experienced and not just the buzzword, the default word that everyone uses in the current moment? Man, there is uh, there are so many things to break down when we talk about the buzzword itself. Uh, I think you did a great job of, of uh, explaining how it's overused in general because it's just the word that everyone resorts to if they're feeling a number of those things that you yeah. said. I'm not going to recap that piece, but that's what we use. Uh, I've got several questions. Let's just start Go. with this. Is the word itself generational? Is it being used by a certain Burnout. generation than, than, than others? Yeah. Is it? Oh, is, absolutely. Yeah. You didn't really say too much about that. I don't think we covered that before. Is there a reason be behind that? Or is, 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 is a different generation use a different word and they overuse that word as well? Uh, well, I think the unique thing, if I could speak without authority on this. Yeah. I, mean, I really don't a, know. Yeah. It's just a question. Like we used to not have that many me. options. Yeah. Like you know, like uh, my mom's maiden name is maiden name is Baker. Yeah. Somewhere in our history was someone who was a baker. <laughs> yeah. Like we acknowledge that. Fair. And you were raised with a without infinite options. I got you. And so I think that's a large tendency of what happens today is we get overwhelmed by the options and then frustrated in what we're currently doing instead of. I'm not saying we should just accept whatever we're doing. Hear me clearly. Yeah. On that. I think that's one of the reasons why it's we just, don't hear burnout. Yeah. It's just interesting. And it, but it's, it's, it's commonly used, uh, especially by different generations, um, specifically the younger generations, yeah. uh, which is just an interesting thing for me. I, I want to go back to the definition again, because I, 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 I want to know what your take is on the part that it says here, uh, resulting from chronic workplace stress, Yeah, workplace specific stress that has not been successfully managed. What, what, where's that go to for you? Wait, Why wait, are you looking wait, at me wait, like wait, that? Wait. Uh, Cause you gave other discussions and your boss is not a narcissist or your team may not be lazy. But at the end of the day, the definition that the Mayo Clinic's giving is it's just not successfully managed. Yeah, so I, I think the uh, I think the reason for that, why it's so important in the definition is we're talking specifically on burnout. It's just the idea that um, not, we're not all equally uh, adept, competent in managing stress. So the issue isn't always the amount of stress. A lot of times the issue is the management of the stress. Agreed. Now, there's an amount of stress that will break anyone. Oh, of course. Okay. So like you go, you put a load in the in the trailer of a truck. Not all trucks can handle an equal load. And yet there is an amount that would break any trailer. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. So we acknowledge the piece there that the issue might not be the stress. It could be. But the issue might not be the stress. It might be our management of it. Yeah. I mean, by the definition, it's strictly because it hasn't been managed successfully. 
No, it doesn't matter the amount. I mean, that's what they're saying at the end of the day. For me, I think, I think, I think what I'm going with this is that, um, obviously, who you work for, who you report to, who yep. you, who's managed by, matters. Yeah. Right. But at the end of the day, you have to decide if that's a place that you want to be. Yeah. Based on how you want to manage the stress of that particular position. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard mm -hmm. because I, most people, I don't know anybody that gets up. Well, <laughs> I don't know most people get up and they go, I don't, I don't want to be great today. Yeah. Right. Like that's not their posture. People want to be great. It's that they don't actually know how to be great. And so yeah. it, 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 when they get to the stressful parts of the job, they usually are, are wanting to, f they, they usually are asking for people to hold up instead of pushing through. Oh, fair. Yeah. I, I think the, I think the underlying issue in all of this, which becomes my frustration is when you ask someone, let's just say it like this. When you genuinely ask someone what's wrong, their answer, I believe is rarely accurate. It may be, it, it is the first thing that pops into their head. And instead of understanding like, like, could I just say it like this? Um, like you may not be burnt out. You may just be isolated. Yeah. Like this, this is a reality of it. Yeah. And I think we fall into all these different things. I, I don't meet many people who own initially their responsibility for the issues that they're facing in their life. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, of course. So we go like, Hey, what's the matter? And people will be like, Oh, I'm just exhausted. I'm overworked. I don't hear anyone go, hey, how you doing? Oh, I just have terrible nutrition, so I have no energy. <laughs> I keep stacking my day with carbs, meal after meal after meal, and all of them are simple carbs, and so I just get this sugar rush. That would be so relieving to hear someone answer that their fundamental issue in their life is their nutrition. Yeah. But we don't do that. And so we just default to whatever language everyone else is using. <laughs> and so we never actually make the adjustments that we need to make. It's funny because we just had this conversation had this before conversation. I was telling Caleb. <laughs> was I was telling Caleb, I was like, the reason that I feel physically the way I do I is know. because of my eating habits. I mean, I'm not trying to say it's it, someone's forcing me I to know. eat bad. Like I am actually claiming I am not doing well yep. at that. Like, and I, I just, I, for me, it's not hard though. Like for me, that's not hard to say I'm bad at that. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I, I'm not I saying it is that, a, I expect that other people can say that they're bad at things too. And that's why they're not going where they need to go I, I, because I'm, I'm able to clarify that for myself. So can I say, uh, uh, Brene Brown, uh, released a book uh, a couple years ago called Atlas of the heart, which was just a navigation of different emotions and things like that and description. And that for, for, uh, helping my children has been massive Yeah, because it's given me additional words, languages, and descriptions. Uh, so I would say part of it is we're not aware of what we're actually feeling. And so part of what the work we need to do is to educate ourselves on what's really going on. And then we can better understand how to handle it. I think that's the, the end all be all here. Let's not call it that. Let's actually find out what it is and call it what it actually is. Yes. Um, wrap this up. This that's that's the way we'll end this today. One five seven. You're not burnout. Getting a better vocabulary. Yeah, I just want to come back to that key idea. When we are lazy in the diagnosis, we are usually wrong in the treatment. So please, please, for your sake, do not default to buzzwords that everyone else is expressing as to what's going on. Find out for yourself what's actually happening and your treatment getting better, gaining capacity will be far easier in the long run. All right. Thank you for joining us today. If you're new to the podcast or haven't yet subscribed, it'd mean the world to us if you did that now. Also post about it, rate and review or both. You won't believe how that helps get this podcast in the hands of so many more leaders just like you. We love hearing your stories of how the podcast is working in your life and business. If you have a story, visit leadinghope.online and send that to us. We would love to hear from you. And remember, everyone has 20 minutes to learn to become a better leader. Make it count. Thank you.